Hello and welcome to Excel Dashboard Templates.com. This is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at Excel Dashboard Templates.com so you're sure to get the latest posts, tips, tricks, and techniques and learn everything about Excel. All right, today uh, is my answer to the Friday challenge that I posted last week. Uh, we are creating a step chart from the interest rate data from 1947 for uh, the federal funds rate, which uh, sets the prime rate. So we've got how the rate changes now. The rate stays the same for a long time sometimes. This is almost two years there uh, where it just stays the same. You can see it's just a line going across. Here's a really long one that we had as well. Uh, we've lately been in a, uh, a fixed rate environment at the low end for um, several years now. And so to create the step chart, so uh, we're doing this as a step chart so Excel doesn't uh, interpolate the line and look like it's growing um, from here. Uh, let's see, especially in these flat parts, it would go downward instead of just straight across. Um, so I uh, showed you the technique how to do this uh, in the last video. Um, Don also showed us a great manual way. Uh, the challenge Friday was how can we come up with a formula to do what we need to do. Let's get rid of this chart and uh, show you how we go about doing that. So what we want to do is if it's the first date, we want to just leave it alone and then we want to look up that rate value. If the, then we're going to take a look at the next date and um, what we want to do is for this next date we want to create a data point from August 1948 with a rate of 1.75 then we want to create a second data point of August 48 with a rate of 2 that way it'll give us that vertical of it went up a quarter percent um, that one year uh, then we'll be flat again and so we need to create a September with a rate of 2 and then a September with a rate of 2.25 so uh, let me show you the formula that I came up with and then we can just copy it down and quickly make our step chart. So what I did is for the year, uh, we're going to just do a simple uh, lookup of what we want to do is we want to find the small value. So do equals small parentheses and then we want to do what is the array. So we want to look up this whole table and we had that as table one and we're going to be looking up the date. So I'm just going to hit tab and end my brackets. Um, now here's the trick um, of what we want to do. Uh, since we want to duplicate August of 48 and we want to duplicate September of 50 and we want to keep doing that, what we want to do is we want to uh, come up with a counter to give us the small value um, of this. So the first small value is 47, uh, then we're going to go 48 and we're going to do that one twice. Um, so what we want to do is, uh, I said, you know, we have a natural counter with the row we're in. So right now we're in row three, then we'll be in row four, then we'll be in row five. Um, and so uh, we can do the row and just say, give us, return the value of the current row we're in. And as we copy that down, it'll increment by one every time. So, um, however, uh, the row, you notice it's three and four. We want it to be three and three, and then we want it to be four and four, and then five and five. So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to truncate, so a trunk function, it's a, truncates the number of an integer by removing the decimal or fractional value of the number. And so we want to know what number are we going to truncate. We're going to truncate the row and just end the parentheses right there. Uh, that's saying give me the current row. And we're going to take that current row and we're going to divide it by 2. So what that does is in row 3 divided by 2 is 1 and a half, truncated that's going to be a 1. Um, 4 is going to be uh, divided by 2 is 2 and truncated is still 2. 5, this is where we're going to duplicate August twice. 5 is going to be a truncated value of uh, or a, a divided by 2 is 2 and a half, truncated is 2. So for row 4 and row 5 we're going to get a counter of 2 showing up in there. Um, and let's just do that and it's going to say um, <clears throat> So uh, uh, we're going to truncate the row. Oops, I ended my parentheses too soon. Um, and it's going to say how many digits do we want to do it to. We want to truncate the digits to zero. Then we can end our parentheses. We can end our whole uh, function for small and hit enter. Now this is showing up as a weird number because I have it as an accounting format. I want to just change that to a short date. And now we have 12.1 of 47. That's the first one. As I start to copy this down, 
Look at that. We're going to get 8, 1 of 48, 8, 1 of 48, 9 of 22, and so on. So I can just copy that all the way down, and that is going to get me my values. Now let's go to the very bottom down here. Now, as you can see, I copied it down, but I'm only at 1980 because we have 343 data points. So that means I need to get to around 687 uh, rows. So let me copy that down to about 687. Oops, went too far there. Let's go back up a ways. I'm getting closer and all right so somewhere around 687 you'll know you're done when you actually hit the end and it says uh, uh, we have no more they're all numbers because uh, we run out of data all right so uh, now we're gonna do the rate amount um, now this is gonna be a V lookup uh, you can do other things and we'll show some other formulas tomorrow um, but uh, what we're gonna do is we want to look up this number here and return the value um, now, we could just do a simple VLOOKUP, but we, we might run into a little bit of problems in the first data point and then the last data point. So I wrapped it in another if statement. So I've done if, logical test. I want to check and see if the uh, row above is a number. So I'm going to do is number, and I'm going to check and see if C2, so the um, right above our year, um, first year, I'm going to check and see if that is a number. If it is a number, then uh, <clears throat> we know we're in the middle of our chart range, and let's go ahead and find a value. Um, so if it is a number, then we want to do one more if statement, and we're going to say if C3 it does not equal C2, um, and then what we want to do there is if they don't equal each other, we can just put in um, the value above. So if uh, they don't equal each other, we can just go ahead and pick the rate right above us. Now, in this case, it's the first data point, so it's not going to get into this if statement, but down in our data, uh, this will actually just say, if they don't equal each other, then just give me the rate right above. Um, else, what we want to do is we want to do a V lookup, and our, um, we want to look up over here on the left, C3, we want to look up this current date, and we want to look it up in table one. Um, and we want to return the second column of table one. And we want to choose an exact match. So we want to make that false. Um, and then we can end our parentheses um, for this if statement as well. Um, and if it is C2 is not a number, then we just want to do a final V lookup. We're going to be looking up, once again, C3 over here. And we are going to look that up in table one. Uh, we are going to return the second column, which is the rate, and we want to make sure it is an exact match. End our parentheses, and we probably need one more parentheses to end everything and hit enter. And I am getting an error, so let's just go ahead and see where I put an error. Um, ah, we have two parentheses here. We did not need two parentheses. There we go. Okay. And we are getting our VLOOKUP. So let's take a look at the logic here. So it is looking up um, if this is a number, which it is not. It is not going to do this if statement. It's just going to go right to the second VLOOKUP and look up 12, 1 of 47. Now if I copy this down a couple, let's take a look at the next one. Um, for August 1st of 1948, it is saying, is C3 a number? Yes, it is a number. Therefore, it's going to go into this internal if statement. It's going to check and see is C4 equal to C3, and um, if they do not equal each other, and they don't, so 12, 1 of 47 and 8, 1 of 1948, they do not equal each other. So let's just grab the value of 1.75 and put it in there. So uh, that's how we duplicate the rates right here. Let's go to the second one of 1948. Let's go through the statement. Uh, C4 is a number, so it's going to do this internal if statement here. And um, as we look at this internal if statement, C4 does not equal C5. Uh, that is actually false. So it's not going to just grab the number above. It's going to do a V lookup of the number that we have over here, which is 8, 1 of 48. So you can see what it's going to do is it creates that data point with the previous data point um, for the year of 1948. Then it actually looks up the value for August 1st of 1948. Copy that all the way down, and we can quickly make our chart. Let's just go ahead and uh, highlight the data range. And um, 
Once we've highlighted the data range, we can go up to our insert menu, go to the line chart button. Let's do a 2D line chart. And uh, lo and behold, we have our newfangled step chart uh, showing all of the different values. So the first one as it comes across to 1948, goes up a quarter. It stays until 1950, and then it goes up another quarter. Um, so you can just see how you can quickly make your step chart in Excel. Uh, hopefully you found uh, these formulas helpful in creating your own step chart. Uh, you should just be able to copy and use these um, for any step chart that you ever want to do. Uh, tomorrow I'll show you a couple of other uh, samples that folks turned in, and we'll take a look at those. And uh, once you like one formula, you can certainly use it over and over again. Thanks very much. Once again, this is Steve Equals True. Please visit my blog at excel-boardtemplates.com. Also, don't forget to subscribe to my video channel so you're sure to get the latest video post delivered directly to your inbox. Thank you.